Romans chapter 1 and 16 says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. Unfortunately, in the body of Christ today, we've got a lot of ashamed believers that walk around droopy and sad all the days of their life. This says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it's the power of God. If you're not ashamed of the gospel, he won't be ashamed of you. <laughs> when you walk in the power and in the anointing and the glory of God, you don't have time to deal with demonic flow. It's going to come at you. See, the, the, there's always a counterfeit to what Holy Spirit's trying to do. If there's a Holy Ghost flow, you better believe there's a demonic flow. As soon as you make a decision to go deeper in Jesus and go deeper in His Word and worship and prayer and fasting, you can guarantee the devil's going to come barking. Going to send people your way. Going to try to, to stir stuff up. <laughs> the greater is He that's in you than He that's in the world. And so if the enemy has a flow, we know the Holy Ghost has a flow. But if I'm in the flow of the Holy Ghost, I can take authority of that flow and it, and it, and it, flee and it flees from me. Amen. Unfortunately, I think in the body of Christ, you've become so silent <clears throat> that now the, the demonic flow overtakes us at times because, well, we just are weak and we're not in the Word and we're not studying and we're not praying and, and well, you know, it's... Bad things are just going to happen. Well, yeah, but you can take authority over the bad things. You can take authority over bad things. You can take authority over doctor's reports. You can take authority over weather patterns. You can take authority over everything because God, Jesus has given you power. I'm powerful. I'm powerful. You're powerful. And if all this power comes together on a Sunday, we got some mega power. And, and hell should be trembling that we're meeting together this morning. All of Nederland and Port Arthur and, and cities should be shaking under the power of the Holy Ghost. Especially on Sunday. We're in a time and a day now. We are living in the last days. Amen. We're living in the last days. I can hear people saying, well, they've been saying that forever. Friend, I'm telling you, we're living in the last days. Yes. A few folks agree. Thank you. Darkness is, 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 is. Clouds are gathering. Darkness is gathering. But we sit here as the light of the world. The blazing torches of Holy Spirit power in this room. What's going, to, uh, uh, what's going to save America is you. Is your voice. Is the power of the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. Breaking through barriers. Breaking through barriers. We're in a series that you see on the screen called Spirits That Hinder the Flow. And we're going to get into some things, uh, probably not today, probably next week. But I'm just still, I'm still on the flow of the Holy Ghost. Because without the flow of the Holy Ghost, we have nothing. We've got nothing. We might as well close these doors, shut it down, if we don't got the Holy Ghost. I'm tired of Assembly of God churches that are just Assembly of God churches that have no power and no demonstration. If you're going to be Pentecostal, baby, be Pentecostal. That's right. Or close down. Yep. I'm telling you, lines are being drawn in the Spirit. Lines are being drawn in the Spirit. Which side are you going to be on? Going to be on the Lord's side? Or are you going to be on the side that's, going to, that's straddling the fence right now? Whose side are you going to be on? I want to be on the, in the side of the flow. Yes. Everybody shout flow. flow. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is power. It's the flow of God. 
the flow of God. Matthew 10 and 1 says, And when he, uh, being Jesus, called unto him his uh, twelve disciples, he gave them what? Power against unclean spirits. Can I tell you something today? You have power against unclean spirits. Mm -hmm. To cast them out. And to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. If it was good for them, it's good for us. Hello? He gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. And I'm telling you, we're entering it, we're in a season of deliverance right now. The delivering power of the Holy Ghost is being released upon the body of Christ. Because I can tell you, there's some unclean spirits in the church that God is dealing with. And they will submit or be taken down. Hey, it's in the Bible. It's in the Word. I'm just speaking, I'm just, and I'm going to say this. For those of you that think I'm grumpy and mean, I'm speaking the Bible. So if you got a problem with what I'm saying, you got a problem with those scriptures. <laughs> I'm just saying. He gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. So what, that, what does that mean? That I have the flow of the Holy Ghost and the power of the Holy Ghost to tell something to be removed out of someone's life. In verse 7 we go into it and it says, And go preach, saying, The kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils freely. You have received freely give. So I said it's a weekend of freedom. Freely you have received, freely give. Why withhold something that Holy Spirit has gifted you with from the world? Blows my mind. Why withhold something? If you know someone that's fighting a devil, why withhold deliverance? Why withhold healing from someone who's sick? Freely you have received, freely give. Uh, John, uh, Luke num chapter number 9 says, And he called the twelve together, gave them power and authority over all demons, security, and he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God. <clears throat> the kingdom of God. We'll get into that a little bit later. John 14 and 12 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believes on me, the works I do shall he do, and greater works than these shall he do. Because I go unto my Father. Everybody shout greater. greater. It's okay to do the works of Jesus. That's elementary. Greater is next level. Yes. Greater is advancement. Amen. So we're, we, can, we can operate in what Jesus did, but He promises greater works you shall do. So when you begin to step into a, a, the, the advanced flow of the Spirit, He's going to ask you to do some things that you may be uncomfortable with. What did Jesus do? He spit in his hands and he healed the blind man with his spit, right? right? It's a little jacked up to me. But he was obedient, right? Yeah. And guess what happened? The fire of God, the, the, the promise of the Father was released and the man was healed. Why? Because of obedience. Yes. Yes. See, when you're obedient, God can take you further. God will bring you into an advanced season of His presence when obedience unlocks more. Yes. Obedience unlocks more. What did I say last week? The secret to more is in your surrender. It's in your obedience. If I'm surrendered, if I am surrendered, then I can fully be obedient. Yeah. But if I'm not surrendered and my flesh is playing games, then I have a decision. I can do what my flesh wants or do what my spirit wants. But we're not, our flesh is supposed to be dead. Hello? Our flesh is supposed to be dead and our spirit man is supposed to be leading and guiding us. Amen. And so if that's the case in our lives, then my spirit man 
is advancing me into more kingdom purpose. And my flesh has no power over my spirit. Because I'm a dead man. <laughs> You're a dead woman. <clears throat> John 7, verse 37 through 38 said, And on the most important day of the feast, the last day, Jesus stood and shouted out to the crowds, all you thirsty ones, come to me. Come to me and drink. Believe in me so that rivers of living water will burst out from within you, flowing from your innermost being, just like the Scripture says. So we're talking about the river of God, the power of God, the flow of God. Say, I am anointed. I am anointed. Yes, you are. The, these Scriptures will not be on the screen, but you can write them down. Um, Psalm 46 and 4 says, God has a constantly flowing river whose sparkling streams bring joy and delight to His people. Come on. That brings joy and delight to His people. If you're feeling down, depressed, oppressed, get in the river of God. Right. What's the river of God, Pastor John? It's the presence of the Lord. Yeah. Put on some worship music and begin to pray in the Spirit and begin to just re get rid of all that junky stuff, that junky flow, that the flow that's been trying to push you around. Get rid of it and jump in the river Amen. of God. We used to sing a song called uh, Let the River Flow and Let the River Flow Holy Spirit come Move in Power and why, and we when we when we would when we would sing that, all I could imagine would be the river flowing from heaven into my spirit, man, giving me the function and the ability to advance in kingdom purpose. You can't advance and with kingdom purpose until you get rid of things that hinder the flow. If there's barriers in your life, if there's things, if you have set up. Uh, uh, um, um, just different things, you know, that cause the, the, the Holy Ghost to, 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 to um, not function like it should, then you need to get rid of those barriers. Right, I don't want no barriers. I don't want no, nothing stopping, contaminating. Uh, uh, I don't want any unholy mixture in the flow. Right. Unholy mixture. Well, I've been looking for you. I got sweat dripping all over my face. The flow of God, friend, the dove of God, the, the Holy you gotta, you got to protect that flow. Hello? Amen. you got to protect it. One thing, I, I had an encounter with Jesus many years ago, and now I have them daily, but the one that really got me was when I was 18. And he, he, Jesus walked into the room where I was, I say it this way, which he may not have done this, but he, he like took a hammer and, and hit me, and I fell on the floor, and I don't know how long I was out for, and I got up changed. <clears throat> Encount, the encounter of the Holy Spirit changes you. You're not the same person you were. And so when I start feeling some type of way, if I start feeling angry, upset, depressed, then I know I have opened a door to an unholy mixture. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying today? Yes. There is, there are, there are, there, you can open the door to mixture. Yeah. You got hell breaking loose in your house, then you've opened a door somewhere. You've watched something, you've heard something, you have done, you have done something to open the door to cause divisiveness to cause something in your life. And just like you have opened a door, you can close that door. You can dec decree a thing and see things change. You don't have to keep on going through hell. Hell's not your portion. Heaven is. But you, you, there are spirits that are looking to infiltrate your mind, infiltrate your emotions to get you going in another direction when your family, your church, your family, and your business are going here. Who are you listening to?
Can you go back to my scripture? Or whatever I just read. Oh, you don't have it. That's right, I do. Psalm 46 says what? God has a constantly flowing river. And so if it's constantly flowing and I'm not feeling the Spirit, it's not Pastor John's fault. It's not the worship team's fault. I, I used to hear it all the time. Well, Pastor, I'm leaving your church because I just don't feel anything. Well, sweetheart, dear one, we don't live by our feelings, number one. So let's crucify your flesh. Amen. <laughs> it's quiet today, Brother Phil. But we don't live by our feelings. We live by the Spirit. And so if the Holy Ghost is here, then my Spirit's connecting. But if you feel some type of way and you're mad, you ain't going to feel nothing. I mean, God Almighty Himself would walk through this door. You probably wouldn't even notice it. What did the Bible, and it was at Jerusalem where, Je, where God, Jesus says, I was there and they didn't even, it was the time of their visitation and they had no idea. Right. Lord, don't let it be say of a revived church that you came and we missed you. Right. Don't let it be said of my life that you entered, you entered an a, a in, intimate moment and the phone rang and I missed it. Yeah. See guys, that's what the enemy does. The enemy will distract you from getting deeper into intimate relationship with your father. Amen. Always. An offense will arise. Somebody will look at you and that day you're feeling some type of way. So you'll get this. It happens. We're human, right? right. But you got to stand and say, not today, Satan. I'm, you're not going to get me today. You got to die to your flesh. You got to. You have to. It's a hard thing to do, yes? It's okay to say yes. <laughs> it's hard to die to your flesh. Amen. Let's be real. Let's be humans. <laughs> but it's glorious to know that when you stay in the flow, that the Holy Ghost will help you constantly, consistently to die to your flesh. As soon as you want to say something crazy, He'll convict you. Aren't you thankful for conviction? Yes. Hallelujah. It keeps us accountable. Hallelujah. The flow of God. And there are spirits that block the flow if you allow it to. And like I said, we'll get into that a little later. But I wanted to continue talking about the flow. That's Really, the flow of God is more important than any demonic spirit. So we're not, we don't go around here searching or looking for demons. Although we do understand demons are real, spirits are real, and there, there is warfare. There is warfare. And that war, the, the demonic warfare wants to encapsulate you. It wants to rule and reign in your life. But God has given you what? The power and authority over warfare. So I'm gonna, we're, gonna do, we're gonna talk about in the next couple of weeks the spirit of Jezebel. We're gonna talk about Leviathan. We're gonna teach on things that you probably had never heard of. And let me say, it's scriptural. Yes, yes, it and we're going to do, we're gonna talk about these things because these are there are there are called principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, and, and, and there are strongholds in this region that try to divide and conquer churches, the body of Christ, all over the region. And if we don't expose the strong man, then we cannot gain more authority in the Spirit because there, unfortunately, I want to say this politely if I can, there's just churches that don't warfare anymore. Well, we're just going to pretend it's not happening. We're going to pretend that the war on gender is not happening. We're just going to pretend that it's not, it's not really happening. No, not, from this pulpit, we're going to speak truth. And we're going to declare war on the enemy's camp. And we're not going to go over there and take our stuff. But we're going to stand there and say, you have no power and no authority. 
and our school system and our governments and our church and our family. From this place, we're going to legislate heaven's decree. Heaven's decree, not John's decree, heaven's decree. We're going to begin having uh, intercessory prayer nights and they're going to be loud and they're going to be wild and they're going to be crazy. And we're going to be legislated, legislating. the. We're, we're, we're going to become the mouth of God to decree a thing. Why? Because if we decree a thing, it shall be established as long as we're in the flow of the Holy Ghost. We're not decreeing our thing. We're decreeing what the Spirit wants. The flow of the Holy Ghost. Important to this church and important to your life. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 19 says, Do not put out the Spirit's fire. Do not put out the Spirit's fire. I'm going to talk about that for just a moment. We're all at different levels and different journeys with Christ. And some folks are red hot. Some folks are medium some folks are on high. Some folks are simmering. There's no judgment on the level of your fire. Okay? But can I say this? If you see someone who's passionate for the Lord, don't mock, criticize. Don't put out the Spirit's fire. Because what's going to end up happening over the next couple of weeks year, two years, three years, we're going to, this church is going to fill up. We're going to tear down walls. We're going to make some changes. You're going to begin to see things start shaking around here. The power of God is swirling in this room. So, so you're going to begin seeing and you're going to begin seeing people come off the streets. You're going to start seeing folks that maybe you worshiped with 30 years ago, 20 years ago, that left the church, get delivered and healed from oppression, depression, offense. And they're going to get set on fire by the, by the Holy Ghost. We're going to begin seeing it. But I've got to teach us as the core group, let's not judge those that come in this house. The tatted, the drug addict, the prostitute, the homosexual, we're not going to judge. We're going to invite them on a journey to repentance, to life change. And we're going to see the power of the Holy Ghost impact them. And God's going to move in their life. You're going to see pipes up here. You're going to see wheelchairs left here. Canes left here. Why? Because we're pursuing the flow of the Holy Ghost. You may not want to do that. I don't know. But God will send 10 people that want to do it to the one person who doesn't. Because friend, I'm telling you, people are getting tired of predictable, programmable church. I'm going to say it again. People are getting tired of predictable and programmable church. What caused my encounter with the Lord was I got so unsatisfied. I got so dissatisfied with what I was being uh, a part of that God gave me a hunger for more. I didn't go bash the church I was in. I just started getting to the Word of God. I just started praying more. I just started worshiping more. And then I invited some friends to join me. And then we got on fire together. And it just became what we called encounter. And the power of God would fall on Saturday nights at 8 o'clock. We never advertised it. Because you don't have to advertise the true move of God. And we would meet, just a few of us, Jeff and I and just, just two of our friends. And we would pray. And we would get wrecked by the Holy Ghost. And then somehow or another, one thing led to the other and people started coming. And before we knew it, we had a packed house, packed room 
of hungry 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 year olds crying out for a move of the Spirit. And the church didn't know what to do. And they quenched it. And they said we were doing, excuse me, they said that we were doing too much. And all it was, was a prayer meeting with, with David and Nicole Binion singing on a CD. That's all it was. We weren't doing anything. I've got pictures. I'll, today I'll, I'll put them on the screen. Just kids just laying on the floor. Just all up and down the altar. 30, 40 kids. No one twisted their arm. They came because they got hungry. Are we hungry? Are we hungry? Not for miracles. Not for signs and wonders. But for the person of Jesus. We get him. We get everything. I want my hunger to supersede my frustration. I want my hunger to supersede my ailments. I want my hunger to supersede anything and everything because, friend, it is all about Jesus. It's all about Him. High and lifted up. and lift it up. High and lift it up. This train fills the temple. Holy, holy! <clears throat> we can't miss it, friend. We can't miss our hour, our moment, our moment. Let's stand.